This is the Boys Gen V podcast from TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about Gen V Season 1, Episode 4, The Whole Truth. Hey, man, can we talk? Please, no. You can't run forever, you know. Yeah, buddy, they're gonna find you and hurt you again. Just leave me alone, television's Jason Ritter. Only this time, they'll hurt her too. And it'll be all your fault you couldn't protect her. No, no, I won't let them. There's only one way to make sure, bro. How? Well, thanks, silly. You know who hurt you. He hurts everyone in the woods. Dr. Cardosa. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you know what you have to do. No, 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 no. Well, you know what you want to do. Just, just, just shut up, television station winner! You have to kill him! Kill him! <laughs> Brought to you by the letter K. Welcome back, fellow university-educated boys and girls. This is the Boys Gen V podcast from TV Podcast Industries. We're on to the fourth episode of Gen V, The Whole Truth. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow boys and girls. Yes, we're on to the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Or maybe a little bit other than the truth. Yes. <laughs> Tech Knight, the man who loves the hole in the donut. He does. He does. That's all of the whole Quite truth. A lot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is our spoiler-filled discussion about the fourth episode. So make sure you've watched it before you join us for the rest of our podcast. And we are going to go spoiler-filled of course this time. I've got a new um I got a new sound effect to add to my my buttons uh, for the podcast. Oh, go on then. Yeah, from episode 3. Yeah. Get it. Got it. Good. Cuz it's just such a good quote. <laughs> Get it. Got it. Good. It's so stunned. <laughs> uh, love it, love it. Uh, that, of course, from the wonderful, our favourite character, Emma, uh, who features quite prominently in this episode. She certainly she does. looms yeah. large, let's say, uh, over the oh, end of this episode, definitely. Yes. <laughs> But of course, as a reminder, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, make sure you pop on over to tvpodcastindustries.com. You can subscribe to the boys' feed there, which has all of our coverage of every boys' show, including Diabolical, the animated spinoff, uh, Gen V, of course, the spinoff, and it also includes um, Invincible, the animated uh, show, which is similar in style, at least, uh, yes. to the boys. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, all available on Prime Video as well. Um, you can also subscri subscribe to our main feed, TV Podcast Industries, where you'll get the coverage of all the other shows we're covering, including... Ahsoka, which has had its uh, finale as you're listening to this episode. We haven't recorded it yet because we're recording in advance. Uh, Wheel of Time, which also has its finale this week. Again, we haven't recorded that yet. Uh, and upcoming, uh, Loki Season 2 will also be on that yes, feed. Yes, mm. absolutely. Which we've seen, but we haven't recorded about yet. No, yeah. absolutely. We will be coming back with that, but we had loads of other shows to cover, so we're going to hold off on that for a little while longer. Yes, definitely. But we do want to hear your thoughts as well about all the shows that we're covering. You can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries. Yes, and of course, just a reminder, fellow boys and girls, and of course, fellow quizzes, uh, we will be continuing our Gen V student bar quiz uh, with the fourth question uh, later on in this episode. So just remember to gather all eight answers together at the end of this season for the student bar quiz mm -hmm. uh, questions. And, of course, you'll be in with a chance to get your hands on some Gen V goodies. And, of course, for the Gen V student bar uh, quiz, I will be joined by podcasting's Derek O'Neill. <laughs> I like it, John. I like it. We're going to talk about that as we get into the episode, I'm sure. Uh, but on to this episode. Once again, the show is developed by Craig Rosenberg and Evan Goldberg. And of course, Eric Kripke, who is the uh, creator of the Boys TV series. Uh, the showrunners for the show, Michelle Fasekas and Tara Butters, based on the comic series from Garth Evans and Derek Robertson. Executive producers for the show are Eric Kripke, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Uh, this episode was written by Jessica Chow, who has the great honour of being the writer of Hero Gasm, personal three, hero, six. personal hero, personal hero. Get that on TV, absolutely. Yeah, personal Gasm, 
Uh, exactly. <laughs> the uh, director of this episode was Stephen Boyum. Uh, he has directed episodes of, Boys, of The Boys before. Back in season two, he directed episode three, Over the Hills with the Swords of a Thousand Men. Very good. Yeah. So uh, two alumni of uh, of The Boys over here in Gaju. Uh, directing episodes of Gen V. Excellent stuff. I'm sure they'll be adding their bronzed statues to the lineup there outside uh, Godju yeah. campus. Absolutely. Let's hope their heads don't get crushed by people with uh, with magnetism, Paris. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for Gen V episode four, The Whole Truth? Sure. On the instructions of Vought International, soup powered investigator Tech Knight brings his TV show, The Whole Truth to the campus of Godolkin University. With the hashtag, why did Golden Boy do it, still trending, he's been tasked with getting an answer to cover up the connection to the woods under the school. Concerned for her missing housemate Emma after Andre sent her to the woods, Marie tries to get help from a clairvoyant student, Rufus, to find her. But Rufus is a serial sex offender and tries to use his powers to assault Marie. With Jordan's help, Marie comes to her senses in time to make sure Rufus never does this again. Mm -hmm. Despite Dean Shetty warning him off, Tech Knight goes after the top five. He interviews Andre, speculating that his relationship with Kate drove Luke over the edge. Or was it jealousy from Jordan Lee, or Kate being pushed from a promising career into the management of Golden Boy? He keeps following leads until he interrogates Marie Moreau, pushing her to get the truth of the story, that she was not the guardian of Godolkin. Jordan Lee actually saved her. With the story not going as planned, Tech Knight tries to pin it on Dean Shetty, but the Dean has learned of Tech Knight's proclivity for filling every hole he sees, and blackmails him to leave the school and its students alone. <laughs> Jordan is angry that Marie threw herself under the bus to tell the truth, but a spark is forming between them as they kiss. Emma returns. Sam uses powers violently killing half of the security team in the woods to get them both to safety. After that, they hid out an abandoned drive-in, but after learning of his brother Luke's death, Sam starts to disconnect from reality. Puppets from a children's TV show and television's Jason Ritter encourage Sam to go to the home of the woods scientist, Dr. Edison Cordoza, and kill him for what he has done. As Sam threatens the scientist, his husband and son, Andre, Emma, Jordan, Marie and Kate arrive to subdue him. With the rest overpowered by Sam, Emma eats herself giant and holds him down. As the team tries to calm him down, something happens and Marie wakes up in bed beside Jordan Lee, not knowing how they both got there. I hate when we get to the end of an episode and go, and then something happens <laughs> and then they appear somewhere else and we can't talk about how yeah, it, it was, happened. Yeah, we'll, see. we'll have, to, have to wait to episode five to find out what happened there. Definitely. It yeah, it was kind of like that. Whoop. Yeah, as it kind of just immediately cuts off. Exactly, exactly. It was one of those moments where you're going, I wish there was a blinding flash of light there so I could yes, write it in the synopsis. Definitely, well. <laughs> definitely. But lots of stuff did happen in this episode, following on from last week's uh, big cliffhanger at the end of episode three, yeah. where Emma and uh, and Sam were left in the woods about to be attacked by all the security guards. Yes. Hmm. But yeah. let's get into our big moments from the episode. We'll talk about all of the big things uh, that happened. We start out usually with our freshman or minor moment. I think this time we have to talk about Rufus the Rapist. I think so. Yeah. Um, here played by the actor who played Jack in uh, in Supernatural. We mentioned him uh, when we saw his face in the first episode going, hang on a second. He seems to be quite a small role for, yeah. uh, for him. <laughs> Maybe he's actually just going to college and wants to pay his way. Well, that's um, it. Great yeah. to see Alexander Calvert here uh, Definitely. as Rufus. With he, blonde hair this time. With blonde hair this time. Uh, in Supernatural, he was a really well-loved character. He's a, a new character that came in the last few seasons of the show. Um, here, not no, so loved. Not so loved. No. I mean, we've already seen Kate effectively telling him to whack his balls. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Jumanji. Yep. And Jumanji, <laughs> yes. So his nether regions are not getting uh, the best deal at the moment. No, and rightly so, I'd rightly say. Rightly so, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. um, but whether he has also healing powers, mm -hmm. because despite hitting himself uh, in the old uh, plums uh, repeatedly mm -hmm. every hour, um, he seems to be kind of ready to go, even if it is non-consensual. Yeah, I got it. What a 
douche. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the whole setup for this is basically that Emma's been missing. Uh, Andre sent her into the woods and Marie's looking for any help she can while yes. the main top three are kind of going, well, not really our problem. We're in over our heads here. Um, I think even Jordan says, like, we're not the Scooby gang, you know, don't we're not going to get ourselves <laughs> a talking dog in a green van to go out and investigate this. So let's just leave it. But Absolutely. Marie's not willing to do that. This, no. is her, this is her housemate that's gone missing. Definitely. Know? And I mean, little, you know, does Marie know as as well is that there are a few, uh, dare I say it, small breadcrumbs uh, pointing to Emma that uh, Dean Shetty finds in the woods mm-hmm. as well. So little does Marie know that maybe, you know, there are theories forming at uh, Dean Shetty's office exactly. around who may uh, have caused the uh, skull effing uh, of the guard. Yes. But definitely uh, here... With Rufus, prior to his dastardly deed, we do see him making that connection, sort of, or seeing her uh, after Marie gives something of Emma's uh, to him to make that connection. Yeah, I think, again, it's probably one of those things with clairvoyance. They tend to say things to make connections between um, someone that you're looking for or a person that's passed on. So that, you know, they're very general, you know, in here. That's probably a bit of the joke, right? That um, that he's a clairvoyant and she's saying, I'm looking for my housemate. And he's going, oh, I can see her. She's with a man or a boy. That's true, actually. So, <laughs> but, I, but come closer and I'll tell you more details. And that's when he uses his other power effectively, which is pheromones to knock her out and take her back to his, to his place. Yes. And she wakes up there in Rufus's uh, dorm. Mm-hmm. On his beanbag and uh, with Rufus standing over her naked but for his dressing gown. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. uh, Ready to do, um, well, to rape her, effectively. Well, he's trying to, um, but luckily uh, she wakes up just in time. Um, Jordan's knocking at the door um, to to wake her up because Jordan saw Rufus and her talking. Obviously, the reputation of of Rufus has spread across the campus of Godalkin University because Jordan was there pretty quickly uh, to make sure nothing happened. Um, But it is Marie that uses her powers to... um, Engorge his member. Yes, yes. Uh, As actually Rufus probably wanted, but uh, to the point where we get um, his uh, exploding penis. Yes, uh, we do. Literally exploding all over Marie's face. Not as he wanted Not as he wanted, no. So, yes, it's a bloody ejaculation from Rufus. Uh And uh, with Marie and Jordan, another uh, another hashtag enters the the lexicon Uh, of Gen V. Yes, it does. Um, (laughs) And yes, I did have to mute that. (laughs) But you got it. You watched the episodes. You know what the full hashtag was. Um, Yeah, look... Rightly deserved, and this is the kind of thing that you will see in the boys' uh, universe and, and in Gen V. You know, I mentioned it back on our coverage of episode one, two, and three. It's where these writers choose a moment to put in a really shocking thing that happens that makes it where it's so unexpected that you're not waiting for it to happen. And it's not just there to shock you. Um, they've done a really good job in Gen V so far in the four episodes that we've watched so far of having those really tie in to um life in college t- having a tie into these characters rather than it just be something yeah. shocking at and the beginning it, of an episode it's effectively a self defense mechanism of marie yeah. like she would do even if she wasn't soup superpowers exactly you know she should probably try and knee him or mm-hmm. kick him in the in, in the crotch yeah and um, this is just she has superpowers and that's yeah. the first thing that flows within her body mm-hmm. as a form of defense mechanism which is what she's doing exactly but it leads to um yes just exploding willy yeah which just sounds like uh, a horror of free will. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. <laughs> but I, I guess she doesn't even know herself that she's doing it. She's, yeah. She, well, she knows she's, she must be doing it, but it's totally instinctual. Yeah. And yeah, um, again, another terrifying use of soup powers from uh, Rufus. From Rufus. Yeah. Well, from characters in this show. Yeah. You know, um, we've, Definitely. we've seen it already before. And uh, now we have this other character who must be, who, we don't even know how many other people that he may have done this to uh, across the campus. Um, but yes, uh, won't ever be doing it again. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but I think we can move uh, from one dodgy moment to another dodgy moment. Yeah. yeah, and another dodgy character. Yeah, our sophomore or medium moment of this episode. Mm-hmm. We have the arrival of Tech Knight. Yes, Tech Knight, who's been mentioned uh, throughout all three seasons of The Boys so far um, as this kind of investigator that's on TV. Uh, but now we get a much bigger appearance from him here yeah, as he's top investigator yeah uh, investigative reporter i guess is, is what he is but um he's using these soup powers that he has um to be able to find out who's lying find out information that um they may not want to release i thought it was really interesting when we have him um showing up at Dean Shetty's office and very quickly we learn he knows exactly what's going on. He's fully aware of Volt's plans. He's not yeah. one of these soups who has the wool pulled over their eyes. He knows exactly what's going on here and he knows exactly what he's trying to do, which is that he's been sent here by Ashley from Vault to cover up the connection between the college and this uh, this place, the woods. Yeah. Um, Investigate so. it to cover up and obfuscate, uh, but ultimately as well, to find a patsy and destroy their lives. Mm -hmm. That is the aim of Tech Knight's game. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, What does he say? I'm going to Johnny Depp someone so hard. (laughs) <laughs> which is find a patsy Ooh, oh dear <laughs> topical i guess it certainly is it certainly is uh interesting character like he's you know he's totally horrible as most of the characters in the who work for vault are actually behind the scenes i suppose behind yeah. their behind the mask that they wear in front of the public um but it's definitely an interesting power, this ability to to dig and dig and push and push, um, knowing what the actual truth is. Yeah, and it, it's just really good the way it's done as well, mm-hmm. whether it's uh, how he kind of, you know, figures out Dean Shetty has got something to hide, mm-hmm. um, but also just his arrogance, knowing that he's got clearance from uh, Vought to do carte blanche. So, Absolutely. you know, despite Dean Shetty saying, don't go after any of the top five in the rankings, he goes after them. Yeah. Like one by one. In actually, uh, the superhero branding course where he is being asked by Dean Shetty to be uh, a guest lecturer to show, uh, his skills. You know, he was a former alumni of Godolkin. Yeah. So, you know, showing his investigative skills um so i i and i i kind of really like that run through everyone uh that he that he did you mm-hmm. know for example like with andre he goes um because he can smell kate on his breath you mm-hmm. know knowing that andre has been um sleeping with with kate yeah all these different types of things yeah. um and you know it, it's just quite well done, but he's obnoxious and horrible about it. You you see that he takes some kind of vindictive pleasure, yeah. specifically after going to the t- going after the top five. You know, this is a character that, as I say, that's been mentioned before. It has a very successful TV show because, hey, if you like shows about detective work and who the murderer is, you know, those hundreds of those types of shows. But if you have someone with superpowers over the top of it, um, able to determine, um, you know, victim statements and able able to sort through all of those, um twists and turns in a murder case, he's going to be massively successful. Yeah. But I'm not too sure how successful he was at Godolkin University, um, whether he was in the top five himself or whether he was in the top ten himself, you know. But he certainly goes after these kids. You know, he's, he even says to Dean Shetty when she tries to uh, tell him to not follow them, he says, well, there's hundreds of kids here. There's loads more that can just step up into those top five positions. Well, that's it. It doesn't matter, really, who these kids are. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. I mean, from Andre, Jordan, and Kate, he Mm -hmm. doesn't find anything that he can use to pin uh, on them uh, around Golden Boy's uh, complosion in the sky. But But he really tries to push it. Like, Andre stands up, throws the microphone off, and walks out of the room, um, telling him he's not going to be involved in this anymore. Jordan he's pushing saying well you know without the um the professor here you would be nobody because nobody else is going to uh, believe in your powers yeah. with Kate he says that she's given up an entire career for her and then you have that moment where Tech Knight switches from slimy interviewer to this powerful um guy where he says if you take your gloves off I'll take your head off because that's Kate's power that she can control other people through touching them with their hands. So, um, so she pretends that she's nervous and wasn't going to try and use her powers. Yeah. We all know she was going to try and use her powers. Um, but 
then he moves on to Marie Moreau and stands her up in front of the entire class, where, again, she's a freshman yeah, he observer. he uses her yeah. as a volunteer. She doesn't actually volunteer. Exactly. He asks for a volunteer, uh, but then just goes around the room and says, you. you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And again, as I say, she's a freshman um, observing this class of seniors, you know, this is this is a, a all the rest of the um, characters we've got in the room here. They're all in a higher position than her, and she's only been in the class for a couple of days. Yeah, and he's having her stand up in front of them, reading her and pushing her until she admits that it wasn't her that saved. Yeah, uh, Godalkin, it's Jordan that did it. Yeah, she couldn't stop Luke at all. Um, and Jordan is the hero, and he, he, you know he gets that. You see Dean Shetty sort of deflated by that. And Tech Knight just goes, that's how you break a witness, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Pochetti is not impressed. Not Marie storms out, but you see the chatter throughout the room because they've learnt the truth in exactly. that moment. Exactly. Uh, interesting uh, moment between Jordan and um, Marie afterwards, though, where Jordan goes to yeah. approach Marie and tells her, you know, why do you have to do the stupid decision all the time? You, yes, you had an opportunity to tell people the story that... I was involved, but you said you weren't involved. You could have said I was involved and you were involved um, and given yourself the same bump up that you some gave. Some credit. Some yeah. credit, but, exactly. uh, but here you are making the stupid decision and making everybody question uh, a lie now that you've told yeah. the world. Yeah. But the other thing and around Tech Knight uh, following that interview mm -hmm. and what leads on to the rest of his story whilst at Godolkin is that, you know, he has that conversation with Dean Shetty where he says, you know, I can't use one of the kids as a patsy yeah. that I've interviewed, uh, but I'm going to pin it on you mm -hmm. uh, looking at Dean Shetty because, yeah. well, you're not a soup, you're just human and you're easily replaceable. Mm. Which leads to a bit of uh, sort of nervousness from Dean Shetty. Yeah. But in fairness to her, she might not be a soup, but she's incredibly resourceful here. As we find out later on, as she asks to meet him without all his camera crew mm -hmm. uh, and uh, his <laughs> entourage, as she confronts Tech Knight, firstly showing him uh, a scan of his head, which is where he gets his proclivity for holes. Yeah, um, he has a tumour uh, going through his head, which seems to have led him to uh, look for holes um, to uh, <laughs> fill, I yes, guess. Absolutely. And uh, she uses that, that, you know, you're not going to find anything here, mm -hmm. anything from the students or from me. And yeah. you're going to go back to Vought and say, there's nothing really to see here yeah. um, to take us off the radar of Vought. And I must say the comedy that they get yeah. out of all of the holes that he sees throughout the episode, even before we know it, um, we see him picking up a donut and the way he looks at, you know, there's something odd going on. Well, it's, yeah, exactly. It's even just then the fact that his show is the whole truth exactly. as well yeah, just yeah. nice nice little touches throughout here yeah. and then the well, hand dryer the skull that he picks up well that's the, it yeah. dean uh shetty showing him his compilation <laughs> of greatest hits uh, as basically he goes around poking himself in a, an assortment of, yeah. of holes uh, as you say from uh and by holes, we'll, we should at least say they are inert holes, yes. uh, you know, abiotic holes, whatever it is. Mm. Um, it, you know, former biotic it's holes. the tops of cones. Yes. It, it's the, <laughs> the gas tank of a car, which was very funny. Yes. But, but the thing is as well, he's not, he's not particularly hiding no. this. Like it was in the middle of a parking lot, the gas tank. And um, you see him having his wicked way with that uh, ring donut after all. Indeed. And, and then a skull. And uh, yeah. sort of an ornamental skull that he picks up off a sideboard. Yeah, but also we <laughs> see him with the knot of a tree at the end of the episode yeah. getting distracted <laughs> as he's doing his close out of the show when he is leaving Godalkin University. And then they do uh, one final one where he's um, with a ha hand dryer that's on. I know, that just, that just felt... Bernie. But you do know that that's a joke, or at least it was to me definitely yeah. a reference to the Mr. Bean movie where Mr. Bean's drying his crotch and looks like he's having sex with a hand dryer. 
And now we have Tech Knight here actually having sex actually with a hand dryer. Actually having sex with a hand dryer, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, but that is not going to be comfortable. No. I mean, that's going to be, like, some degree of burn. Definitely. I don't even want to think about yeah. it, John, and you've made it even more graphic than I would have thought about. Uh, all right. Um, I think that's it for Tech Knight. Uh, he is a big <laughs> character in the comic books. He is, he is yep. directly from uh, Garth Ennis' comic books and expected to be in season four um, of uh, of The Boys, which is hopefully coming out in 2024, Good as long as they pay their actors and now that they're starting to pay their writers uh, they will be back hopefully in 2024 so we will see this character again and um, do you want to tell them or will i tell them that uh, that we recognize there is a couple of traits thankfully not the major trait of tech night but a couple of traits of tech night that uh, may be visible in me uh, on occasion when we're doing the podcast he has a very specific <laughs> uh, line that he says and it doesn't involve uh, it, holes, it does uh, not. fellow boys and no. girls. I must at least state that it does not involve a proclivity for uh, holes. I was really hoping you didn't need to say that, John. <laughs> uh, at this stage, we've been podcasting for ten years. Uh, that's not at all connected uh, to me. Uh, really, it's Tech Knight's line when Andre walks out, where he just goes. I'll find it in the edit, <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. which sounds like me quite often on our podcast when we and go where he does randomly the, the kind of limerick to warm up his uh, mouth. Mm-hmm. Derek is always limericking before <laughs> the show. <laughs> I am, I am. <laughs> Got to get that voice uh, ready to go for the podcast, John. Of course, she sells seashells on the seashore. Yes, very good, excellent, excellent. You've been listening, John. Uh, with that done, on Tech Night and him leaving Godolkin University for good, I would say. Um, I like that he's done the investigation, then goes sometimes the story that's been told is the story and off it goes <laughs> absolutely um, that's it. great so we'll, stuff we'll close it out with our major moment our senior moment from the episode <laughs> well a senior in college I know. is much younger than a senior outside in the real I'm world I'm having right? a senior moment kids <laughs> exactly well I thought it was funny to call them this but hey um, we, we're going to talk about Sam and Emma really um, last week uh, the episode ended with the three episodes ended uh, with this moment as Emma and uh, Sam are about to con- be confronted by loads more guards and this week we see the aftermath of the escape um, Sam it seems using his powers to destroy all of the guards on the way out. Um, but they do, they do investigate, um, what Emma may have done to the body and think that Sam may have skull left the, the guard. Absolutely. Uh, I, but it, it was even, it, it felt like a docu fly through the, the brain mm-hmm. of the guard as it kind of came through. I was half expecting it to be voiced by David Attenborough or something. <laughs> yeah. You yep. know, and here inside the brain of a human being, you see, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know, I just thought it was so funny it and was. just the whole sort of Dean Shetty was like, you know, who's done this? Who's this, mm-hmm. this skull, uh, effery? Um, and it was just really funny, but yeah. she does spot a small clue, a small little runner uh, yes, on does. the ground. A little Cinderella moment here yeah. for Emma. And we do see her asking Marie, where is Emma? So, you mm-hmm. know, Emma at the moment, while she's clear, does have possibly uh, Dean Shetty's suspicion hanging over her. She does, because uh, Shetty also says that she's investigated and found out that Emma hasn't been to a few classes as well. So uh, she definitely has the eyes uh, on Emma at the moment. So uh, be a bit more nervous for her now. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, But... Sam and Emma do get to know each other a bit um, as they go into hiding in the drive-in that uh, himself and his brother Luke used to go uh, used to go to. Emma unfortunately has to kind of begin the conversation with Sam that uh, actually her brother Luke is dead and that he killed yeah. himself. Um, when Sam's pushing back, going, "That's not possible," because he's so powerful and he's pretty much invincible. Uh, Emma has to reveal that he killed himself. That's the way he died. Yeah, I mean, he, it's, he certainly doesn't take it well at all. You know, starts smashing things Mm -hmm. up um and again sort of really going into a state of despondency uh, and depression there but thankfully he doesn't take it out on emma as that you know as the bearer of the bad news Mm -hmm. um and we do see that emma seems to be good at taking him out of his funk really Mm -hmm. um you know and you see them bonding um Especially where Emma's reassuring Sam, who's kind of a little bit freaked out by being outside of a cell. You know, it's it's the first time he's been outside in a long time. He's alone. And, you know, as he says, Luke was all uh, that I had. Uh, But, uh, you know, 
Emma's there for him, and she says that. Yeah. Nonetheless, we have these voices starting to come into Sam's head, mm-hmm. despite Emma's reassurance and her, pre- her kind of comforting presence here. I was getting a few flashbacks to um, last season of The Boys with Black Noir and his uh, cartoon characters yeah, that were exactly. talking to him, because it does seem like something from kids' TV that's uh, speaking and reaching out to Sam. And then we see Avenue V on television, a uh, look, a, a kind of a, a Sesame Street knockoff, I guess, yeah. uh, for this universe. Or maybe Avenue Q has got its own TV show in the US that I'm not aware of. <laughs> um, but we see one of the puppets um, speaking directly through the television to Sam, along with, uh, as they call him, television's Jason Ritter, uh, urging Sam to go and kill the doctor uh, from the yes, woods. Yes, has been doing all uh, the tests. Yeah. Earlier in, in the season, we see him effectively malleting a large needle into Sam's spine. Yes, you do. know, it is the spinal tap from hell, from Definitely. what I could see, to be honest. Definitely, yeah. Um, a very interesting moment. I, I Again, uh, getting those flashbacks to what Black Noir did with the uh, guidance of his cartoon character buddies uh, that were in his brain. Yes. Um, I guess Sam's having something uh, quite similar here. I... I was kind of intrigued why they were calling it television's Jason Ritter. I guess he's been on a few shows that I haven't seen. <laughs> As the son of John Ritter, uh, most well known from uh, from um, Three's Company uh, yeah. from the seventies when we were when we were kids. Did loads of other stuff as well, but uh, but good to see him here. I know him as Jason versus Freddy's uh, Jason Ritter, the uh, the movie that had uh, Jason from Friday the Thirteenth fighting against uh, Freddy Krueger. He was in that yeah. movie, so I know him from that. Uh, I don't I know. I think from that's TV. about all I know him from as well, yeah. but. In and of itself, despite not having the background or context of maybe yeah. sort of day to day American television, mm. it was inherently funny. It was in and of itself. Um, <laughs> television's Jason Ritter. It's just because just because Sam keeps calling it out. Stop t- telling me that's television's Jason <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ritter. Exactly. It's, it's just funny. You know, yeah. It's it's kind of in a sense it's polite, but also a, a sort of an underhand dig at something being kind of ubiquitous across. Yeah. Uh, the the television uh, exactly. during the day, you know, exactly. week and month, and uh-huh. not only that, but you know, month in, month out. So yes. I kind of thought it was inherently hilarious. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good stuff. Uh, but that drives Sam uh, off to go to uh, Doctor Cordosa's house. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we see Doctor Cordosa arrive home from. Uh, the woods and his uh, his family are already taken captive by Sam and Sam looks really aggressive here. He's, he's, he's starting to lose aggressive. it, yeah. um, going after Doctor Cordoza's husband and his son. Cordoza, um, uh, Cordoza, exactly. Uh, but it looks like Sam is going to kill uh, all three of them. He uh, effectively we see how strong um, Sam is. He just taps the uh, central island and it cracks in half. Like no, yeah. our interior decoration, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Our centerpiece kitchen island is is ruined. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know exactly. I'd be like well fuming if I was Cordoza. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd be if, well terrified if I was Cordoza and Sam well, came into my house. Well, that is true as well. But maybe I I would sort of hulk out on that point. <laughs> this is what uh, translates John into yeah. his own superpowers. If you, I, I if you crush pink. his island, yeah. There you go. I turn into the pink Hulk. <laughs> but luckily, uh, the rest of the the crew arrive. Andre, um, Marie, um, Jordan. Kate um, and Emma all arrive at the house, all because Jordan, being the TA for uh, for Professor Brinks, had access to the addresses for Dr. Cordosa, who also works at the college, we hear. Yeah. So uh, they all arrive, and we have Andre using his powers to uh, of magnetism to yeah. uh, crush Sam against the wall, but not very uh, for very long, because yeah. uh, Andre gets hit pretty hard by Sam, too. Definitely. I mean, the other thing about it is, you know, ultimately, Cordosa here, socially progressive. Gay man, married with his uh, husband, Mm -hmm. uh, and they have a child, uh, raising a child. Mm -hmm. Socially progressive, ethically bankrupt, um, you know, which is kind of like nice twist here, you know? Well, yeah. I, 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 for me personally, because um, that can also be the way. You know, I, I, come, I come back to one of my favorite quotes um, that I heard from uh, from another podcaster who was talking about uh, that obviously there's a proportion of all society that's gay, uh, a portion, portion of all society that's LGBTQ and can be other things as well, which means we've all got to accept as members of the LGBTQ plus community that there's going to be a proportion of that society that are asked. 
well, right? So, Absolutely. So here we have a guy who is obviously a gay man married with a, married with a kid who is doing unspeakable things yeah, uh, to, exactly. to people in the... Uh, in, in Ethically the, uh, bankrupt. Yes. Yes. In the woods. Sorry. Yeah. should have his doctor title stripped from him. Well, he almost got his life stripped from him here uh, by true. Sam. And luckily, uh, the gang come in and try and stop him. But we have another great battle here from Jordan. Um, not only is the uh, the island in the middle of the kitchen uh, destroyed, also uh, <laughs> no. the tiling on the floors, John. Uh, you remember how hard that was to get done. Um, so uh, as, as Jordan uh, stays his position, feels really like Colossus from the X-Men, just stand still taking the punches from Sam and then uh, turns into his other... Uh, his other version and uh, fights back against him. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I must say, I did like them all kind of, you know, doing their thing mm-hmm. against Sam to try and sort of, you know, stop him from doing something he's going to regret. Yeah. Um, whilst all this is going on, you have Emma effectively stuffing her face with spaghetti and meatballs yes. in order to then, you know, quite calmly come out a lot bigger and just kneel on him it's so, it's so good <laughs> it's really it's so good. good yeah a little bit of a uh, little bit of um, Ant-Man giant man uh, type thing yeah, from the exactly. Marvel Universe uh, as she grows but it must have been quite weird to look at from Dr. Cardoza and his family he came home and specifically commented oh you've made uh, my mom's um, sauce on the on the uh, spaghetti and meatballs and here comes this girl from college who walks in the door and just starts eating their dinner uh, in front of them absolutely uh, but yes of course grows massively big and she's the one that takes out Sam uh, I do like just just sit on him uh, I kind of like that idea of uh, of just stopping stopping uh, a, a very violent uh, kid here, yeah, um, but, just pins him, um, yeah. but then everything go, uh, sort of blacks out here, yeah, uh, and we come back awake with Marie and Jordan in bed together, not knowing how they got there. Or exactly. at least Marie, I think she's the one waking up. She does. Uh, Marie not knowing where she got yeah. there, and a little bit freaking out that. She's next to Jordan in bed, where it all seems yeah. quite nice. Although, you know, we do see Emma walking in on them having a good old snog. Yeah, earlier yeah. on in the episode, we did uh, separately to that. So, uh, so is this a dream that after the kiss between uh, well, Marie exactly. and Jordan, have they suddenly gone into a dream where Marie's waking up um, in bed with Jordan? Don't know. Um, we guess we're going to wait till next week. It didn't feel dreamlike, but yeah, it it could yeah. be. Could be a dream. It uh, could be something else. Uh, we will find out in episode five of, yes. uh, of Gen V. Indeed, we will. But yeah, it was. I, I think this overall was a pretty good episode. Yeah, it was, it was a great a really episode. episode. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really good. Uh, uh, good stuff. Well, fellow boys and girls, they are our three uh, moments for this episode. Uh, Derek, any notes that you may have? Just one thing, I kind of mentioned it uh, earlier on about the uh, the crushed head and the statue, but just to kind of quickly uh, mention that Andre's anger as he comes out of that interview with Tech Knight, he walks outside uh, into, the, into the campus grounds, walks straight over to his father, uh, who was at the interview, effectively answering Tech Knight's questions and putting down his best friend and crushes his head uh, using, his, uh, using his abilities. Uh, Kate comes up behind him afterwards and Andre says, I need you, I love you, uh, to her. Just, you know, just saying it's quite a big change from the two of them yeah. falling into bed together after uh, his best friend died. That's true. Um, there seems to be a much closer relationship developing between the two of them there. Yeah, definitely. He also tells her that his father, Polarity, knows everything yes. as well. Yeah. And interestingly... Earlier on, it is Kate and Jordan who are the two of that group that think they're in over uh, their heads mm-hmm. and, and that the group really shouldn't be doing anything, certainly not nothing stupid. Yeah. Um, but it, it's Andre because of Luke being his friend yeah. that wants to continue pursuing, you know, and trying to find where Sam is, but also Emma because he was the one that got her to shrink down and go in, mm-hmm. uh, but also Marie because Emma's her doorm mate yeah. and uh, friend. friend. Yeah. So, exactly. like, it, it's kind of interesting. There's, there's almost like a sort of a little bit of a, a split there mm. uh, in terms of those, the go-getters and those that just think, okay, this is way too big for us to, to, to do anything about. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. 
And Emma is way too big for anybody to do anything, anything <laughs> yes. in this episode. Anyway, John, do you have any additional notes for the episode? Yes, the only uh, other note I, I have is that Tech Knight, we've talked about some of the items. He did actually uh, pick up and look longingly at a sellotape dispenser yes, as well, did. or a sticky tape dispenser. <laughs> um, sort of, And I think he, he just rimmed his finger around the whole of the, the, the dispenser. He did. That was in class with all the yes. other students. And uh, afterwards, yeah. You're kind so of wondering how far would he have gone uh, because he's not, as you say, it seems to be a compulsion yeah, uh, for It's him. always yeah. on his mind, shall it we is, say. It is. The whole truth and nothing but. Uh, good stuff. I think that's it for our discussion about the episode of uh, The Boys Gen V. Overall, John, what do you think of the episode? I uh, really, really enjoyed this. I, I would give this uh, four and a half uh, bloody splurges out of five. Ooh, yes. Uh, yeah, it, I, I just thought it was really good. I loved Tech Knight here. Mm-hmm. And just that creepy investigator sort of with the, you know, the, the, just the carte blanche from Vought. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just, you know, Vought is getting more and more creepy here in what they're doing. You know, this notion of trying to maintain corporate purity and, and you know, angelicness um mm-hmm. about what they do but all behind this it's just deeply intrusive deeply awful I, across all of this i mean as yeah. i said i've said ethically bankrupt um a uh-huh. lot of the times here whether it's cordoza <laughs> or whatever but i mean it, it extends to vote i mean Absolutely. i think that's the point is that this corporation and all its fronts no matter what it is whether it's in the superhero branding world mm-hmm. whether it's godolkin U- university yep. all of them are just bankrupt um, Mm -hmm. and really not as they appear. I mean, even Kate says, um, you know, that it's like a Dr. Mendel-like clinic down in the woods, which is reference to Dr. Mendel uh, at Auschwitz, you know, uh, one of the Nazi extermination camps. Right. And and you're just like, you know, it feels a bit like this. It's Mm -hmm. like, we will destroy lives, we will find patsies and all that. And I thought... The Tech Knight story going through this episode was really, really good. Yeah. I like the sort of the whole uh, Sam and the Puppets, just really good fun. <laughs> uh, and certainly, yeah, yeah, reminiscent of Black Noir. So whether mm. there's some kind of similarity there uh, be- or between these two and their superpowers, Maybe. Um, who knows? And then... I thought I think t- I think Black Noirs were because he had ha- had half of his brain well, that is, blown off, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, but Sam's been tested mm. quite intrusively, yeah, so maybe, maybe similar kind of trauma. Cells, yeah. um, I think as well, you know, with the climax at Cordoza's home, mm. effectively this group now is even more on the radar. You know, we do see. Uh, Shetty inquiring about Emma through here, but Cordoza, you know, sees this group here trying to bring Sam down. Yeah. Hears them saying, we want to help you and, and all that. That abrupt and sudden ending of, mm-hmm. of that scene where to Marie and Jordan waking up in bed together, mm-hmm. you know, is really intriguing. So looking forward to episode five. So yeah, for me, four and a half uh, bloody splurges out of five. Really enjoyed it. Great stuff. Yeah, me too. Really enjoyed this one. Can't wait for uh, the next episode. This series has just been going gangbusters, as we'd say uh, yeah. over here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit of really, really good show. And looking forward to the fifth episode. That's the halfway point of the season, weirdly, uh, after only two weeks, John. I know. It's mad, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think... We have finished our discussion about the episode itself. Get it. Got it. Good. We have got it. Uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> let's go to the pub, John. Well, let's go to the student bar. Yes. Sorry to say it. I uh, gonna... Drinks are oh, but 50p. Oh, uh, I'm going to have to change night. the name of all of the, uh, of all of the pub quiz right, <laughs> yes. for this season. It is the student bar. Of it, course is it is the student bar. Fellow boys and girls, fellow quizzers, we're on episode four, which of course brings us neatly thankfully, to question four, mm-hmm. which is, what two signs does Tech Knight observe on Dean Shetty to show she has something to hide as he questions her in her office? Ooh, very good. And for a bonus point, what other thing does Tech Knight observe about her? Ooh, two points this week, John. Interesting. Yes, a yeah. two-pointer. Good stuff. We like, we like two-pointers here. Uh, do you want to give the question one more time? Sure. What two signs does Tech Knight observe on Dean Shetty to show she has something to hide as he questions her in her office? And as a bonus point, 
What other thing does Tech Knight observe about her? So, fellow boys and girls and quizzers, collect all eight answers together uh, and email them in at the end of the season to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com, where you'll be in with a chance of getting your hands on some Gen V goodies. So, good luck. Absolutely. Very best of luck uh, to everybody entering into that uh, that pub quiz. We are once again recording the episode a bit early, but we have got some feedback in on the first three episodes because they just stuff. came out uh, on Friday of this week, um, or obviously Friday of last week. Uh, but first up, we got an email in from Coffee and Vodka who says, Greetings, fellow God, you alumni defenders. When not indulging in its young adult aspects, these episodes stand with some of the best of the boys, especially the first episode. Saying this, these basically seem to be the world building run up to the fantastic gore fest to come which i cannot wait for <laughs> four bad first periods golden nuggets and curious intelligent men out of five peace and take care coffee and vodka excellent stuff coffee and vodka yeah. uh yeah absolutely i cannot wait for how this is going to play out but certainly i think uh it's doing a great job at the moment after these first four episodes and indeed after the first three episodes as yeah well. yeah i think i mentioned before on one of the other podcasts that prime video always released three episodes at the same time and it seems like when they get to the second season most of the showrunners now know you're gonna have three released on the same day tell an arc across the three episodes so uh, i think it works really well here yeah. for gen v to have all that time to spend with these characters before we move into the main story for the rest of the season so which we're definitely getting in episode four definitely good um, stuff thanks coffee and vodka. yeah thanks coffee and vodka uh over on our facebook group uh mindy megan said just when i thought nothing could touch that termite scene enter an insecure theater kid and cricket <laughs> absolutely uh, yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and cricket touching probably quite a lot. And that was just the first episode. Uh, when did you see what just happened in episode four? Well, indeed. Yeah. Uh, th- thanks so much, Mindy. Mm-hmm. Um, Jamie Lawson over on our Facebook group also said, just finished the first episode. Really loved it. There again, pretty much anything involving the boys' universe. Mm-hmm. Do you think they purposely cast Patrick Schwarzenegger as Luke because he looked like a young Homelander? Interesting. Yeah, maybe. Certainly, I think the sort of golden look of him, um, the kind of, you know, chiseled, all-American university kid, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I I kind of think he's probably, I think I actually said this to, to Jamie on uh, on Facebook. I think they cast him because of the name recognition of Patrick Schwarzenegger, so you wouldn't expect that he would be the first character to die. So he's set up as Golden Boy, the top of the college, and then by the end of the first episode, he's already dead. And Clancy Brown, the only other person that's a named character in the show, set up, uh, and I think he's in every trailer as well. Uh, he's dead by the end of the first episode. We've seen both characters back in the four episodes since yeah, then. Absolutely. We've seen them in flashbacks. We've seen them in uh, other scenes that weren't in the first episode. So they are playing a big part in the series. But just I think the shock of here's the two people that I think that I think I know in the show, and then they're dead by the end of the first episode yeah. is what they were probably going for with the boys. And but, I think yeah, yeah but absolutely. it is interesting. He looks like Homelander though. Yeah, definitely. And I also I think Patrick Schwarzenegger certainly looks more like his mother. Um, Maria Shriver than Arnie. Yes, he does. He certainly wasn't uh, busting uh, out the weights uh, every <laughs> single day like his dad was, uh, definitely. Yeah. Good stuff. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, Dr. Bob Phillips sent us uh, some messages on each of the episodes uh, that, that we released last week, episode one, two, and three. Uh, first up in episode one, he says, I think if you've never seen The Boys or watched the trailers, the first five minutes would be quite enough to allow you to know if this was your cup of tea. <laughs> tea is about the only thing this show is unlikely to ever have. <laughs> Balanced, pacey, surprisingly effective attacks on teen tropes alongside the familiar assaults on the whole soup genre and... The to be expected but not predictable major twist made it worth taking waking up a bit early to catch over breakfast, but one to avoid eating black pudding. Watching, well, yes, all <laughs> that blood, um, yeah. certainly. Uh, but I do quite like a black pudding. Oh, definitely, but but uh, black pudding is basically blood pudding. Um, yeah, yeah, blood e- sausage. Eating that Yummy. while you're uh, while you're watching uh, the explosion of blood on screen. Probably yeah. not the best idea. Bit of berry black pudding. Yep, that'll Yum. be great. Oh. oh, hoping for some of that when we're over in Manchester. Yep. Uh, good stuff. Uh, on to episode two, Dr. Bob says, I'd not quite realized the events of episode one were all the delights of Freshers Week, even wilder than most of the ones the UK will have seen, <laughs> I hope. This is pushing beyond the limits I thought were already set out. The sea whale carcass, 
uh, walk of cooked sausage, shame, and octopus fun, but doing it without any sense of it being purely to gross out the audience. Maybe I'm just getting even more insensitive and cynical, but it really fits the uni feel of the characters. Darkness swirls under it all uncomfortably accurately. Low self-esteem, high achievement, and the manipulation coming up from it are, I hope, going to get some sort of almost happy ending. Though, given the previous series, probably not. Well, yeah, absolutely, mm. uh, Dr. Bob. Yeah, it yeah. is really um, being carved out nicely here, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Uh, totally agree. That kind of uncomfortable, dark vibe uh, mm-hmm. at, at a university campus. I mean, whether it's from just, you know, vault on the university, the university trustees seemingly as awful as vault yeah. uh, on, well, most of our board on of their students. Yeah. That whole sort of individual competitive rankings, which I mm-hmm. think can only be the just the invention of sort of the individualness of America. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it really is so weird um, mm-hmm. and the manipulation coming from it uh, for sure. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. It seems so far, you know, that Gen V is taking a completely different pop at the world. You know, the boys was really... Uh, pop at comic books it was a pop at superhero culture about marvel and dc written way before the mcu but really poking fun at these major comic book studios and how they would write their characters whereas here taking a pop at an in-universe university um allows them to go in and poke fun at the tropes of what kids do when they go away from college go away from home for the first time and these kids are really powerful as well so um so i do like how they're taking that and having a very different story to the boys but still feels of the same universe yeah and i should have probably said i I kind of meant the individualism of like the corporatism of vote rather than sort of the individualism of america it's not Mm -hmm. the same i guess it's more it's it's kind of putting that corporate metrics onto it and it's just like you know these are also kids but yeah. they're not for for vault and even for the university they're commodities that they want to use absolutely and to their parents who originally bought into the yeah no exactly injecting them with uh, with compound v as well uh, great stuff thanks dr bob yeah lovely stuff dr bob thanks uh dr bob also comes back in for the third episode he says we do need to talk about the lack of any awareness of STIs on this show. Unless in episode five we get an outbreak of super chlamydia, which <laughs> infects 60% of the student body and 75% of the staff, in which case I'll take it all back. <laughs> Absolutely, Dr. Bob. Um, yes, I, I can't imagine what supercharged chlamydia would actually do. Oh, it no. would be like COVID through the nether regions oh, wow. of, of the, the university. Well, yeah, um, but it's also these kids that would probably spread around uh, the entire campus in about 35 minutes. Maybe. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Although, in fairness, I think they do cover this with a YouTube video mm-hmm. uh, of the... Uh, the students talking about safe sex absolutely and, and yeah. protection so yes. maybe that does combat the rabid spread of stis throughout the yeah. campus yeah and and you know um i think if the story gets around the college will happen to rufus um that <laughs> yeah. might that might stop people wanting to have any sex at all um, yeah. in the college uh, it, just but, in case yeah but there's nothing like your first sexual health clinic as a new member of a university after mm. at least the first term, night, year, whatever it is, <laughs> yeah. whatever the frequency is. That's um, true. Dr. Bob also continues, they outdid themselves with gore and satire of US higher education slash corporate charity in this episode, mm-hmm. and yet still had space for the best meal service scene there's been in quite some time, <laughs> and a genuinely powerful pause around trans identity mm-hmm. and family responses. Really want a cameo from Butcher and Pals towards the end of the series, perhaps causing a distraction while our principal protagonists fell the woods and free those within. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, that's a really good idea, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting if that, that happened, that yeah. we got Butcher and Co. arriving in. I could see maybe Huey arriving. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not too sure whether Butcher would want to go back Because he would have been an alumni of the university that had been sort of knocked down for Godolkin uh, prior. Possibly, you know? yes, of course, because he's that superpowered. Yes, uh, potentially that's that's what could have happened. 
And they have front loaded the cameos of basically everybody from the seven so far. They've mentioned everybody at least um, from the seven. So, uh, so it would be interesting if uh, if some of the kids found out about the boys as they come and uh, and help them uh, take back Gavalkan University. Definitely, yeah. and I think you're absolutely right. That moment with Jordan uh, speaking to the parents mm-hmm. uh, is genuinely, I completely agree. You know, a powerful moment. Absolutely, um, it's really good, and it's kind of just delivered in that matter of fact way by Jordan, you know, that, well, I've, I've been the same when I was in female form as opposed to male. Absolutely. He just never wanted a daughter. I've always been the same person. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. really good. Yeah. Um, you know, thanks so much, Dr. Bob. And thanks everybody for sending in your feedback. We'd love to hear more. Uh, email us into feedback at TV podcast industries.com or pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV podcast industries. There's a spoiler post up there for each of the episodes as we're covering them. Uh, pop in your thoughts on the spoiler post and we'll discuss them on a future episode. Great stuff. Um, please make sure that you share the podcast for the boys podcast because sharing the podcast is, of course, it's sharing the love. It is without STIs. Exactly, exactly. We will be back next time for Gen V episode five. Welcome to the Monster Club. Almost sounds like the Pleasure Dome. So I wonder if this is some kind of gasm on steroids. Okay, I, I was thinking more of the uh, the Monster Mash. Oh, maybe it's my innocent mind. Apparently, Sorry. Uh, not yeah. warped, not warped at all, John. <laughs> but we are also finishing out uh, the Wheel of Time on our main feed on TV Podcast Industries and Ahsoka uh, this week on our main feed, and we'll be back next week with Loki uh, kicking that off as well. Yes, it never ends. Well, hopefully not. Uh, it's, it's been 10 years, so uh, hopefully it'll, uh, it will never end. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. I guess I'm going to be going off to see if I can find, um, find it in the edit uh, of this podcast, see if I can get a, a good podcast out of it, John. What do you think? I have faith in podcastings, Derek O'Neill. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Talk to you next time. Yeah, great stuff, fellow boys and girls. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Gen V. Uh, until next time, keep watching, keep listening. Bye. Bye.